Hello everybody, welcome to Monday's edition of the Chris Pritchard Cycling News Show. We have a virtual Tour de France special coming up for you today. Let's get into it. Oosh. Okay, so over the past few weeks we've been speculating as to exactly what's going to be going off with the virtual Tour de France, but a press release from the ASO and Zwift today announced all the nitty gritty details we've been waiting for. First up, let's talk about the things that we already knew. The virtual Tour de France was going to take place from July the 4th to July the 19th. That's going to span over three weekends where there's going to be two stages each weekend. So one on Saturday, one on Sunday, both for men and women. It was announced last week that there's going to be two brand new worlds brought to Zwift for this virtual Tour de France, one Paris and one of them being France in general. We'll speak about those in a bit more depth later on. So here are the facts. 23 men's teams have been confirmed and 17 women's professional teams have been confirmed. And this has to be straight away the biggest news coming out of this press release is the names that have been announced that have confirmed that they're going to be riding this virtual Tour de France. Chris Froome. Egan Bernal, Geraint Thomas, Greg Van Avermaet in the men's. You've got Chloe Diger, Anna van der Breggen, Mariana Voss and Kristin Wild, who have also confirmed for the women's race. These races are going to be broadcast to over 130 countries. There's going to be a virtual L'Etape de Tour de France to offer mass participation opportunity for cyclists worldwide on the same roads as the professionals. And as I mentioned earlier, the event sees two new maps added to Zwift, France and Paris. So first up, let's talk about the stages. So stages one and stages two are going to take place on Watopia. But according to the press release, Watopia is going to receive several visual additions inspired by Nice, the planned host town for this year's Grand Depart. This is just the, the hilly route on Watopia. So they're going up, I think it's the, is it the reverse or the 4KOM? I can't remember what the hilly route is. I presume it's the Ford KOM and around that. Um, it's 9.1 kilometers, which I think is is the, the distance of essentially the first ever route on, on Watopia. They're going to be doing four laps of that. Um, it could be interesting. We'll wait and see what it looks like. It'd be great if they have just completely dug it all up, took it somewhere else and just completely redesigned that part of Watopia. Uh, and if they have, would you prefer to see the new Nice Watopia back on the original island? I guess once we once we see what it looks like, we'll get a better idea of of whether it's worth asking them to stick it stick it there. But yeah, the first two stages are on Watopia. Stage one is the hilly route, and then stage two is a mountain stage of, of 682 metres of ascension. I don't know if I just made that up. Next up, stage three is going to be held in northeast France. That's 48 kilometres of what they're classing as a flat stage. Stage number four, heading to the southwest of France. It's going to be a big transfer, that. 45.8 kilometers, and it's going to be two laps of a 22.9 kilometer hilly stage. And then stage number five is the Queen stage. That's up Mont Ventoux. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there. It's only 22.9 kilometers, so essentially this is just uh, from the bottom to the top, I guess. There's not much else involved in that. And then obviously stage six is going to be the Champs Elysees. 42.8 kilometers, six laps around the circuit. And just like in the real world, there's going to be leaders' jerseys, both the general classification, there's going to be a sprinter's green jersey, there's also or points classification, should I say, and also a polka dot jersey for the mountains classification. But it's all based on points as opposed to cumulative times. Let me get your thoughts on that. I'm, I'm, I wanted, me personally, and this is just my opinion, I wanted a proper virtual Tour de France where... Teams have selected six to eight riders, however many it is in the, the race, and they're all riding it. Every single stage they're riding it. You can't swap and change riders. If a rider drops out, they drop out. It's bad luck. But over those three weeks, every rider that have confirmed for the first stage will be riding all of them. As opposed to what they're doing here, where they're allowing riders to swap between stages. So essentially you could have your best climbing riders go out for the climbing stages, the flat stages have more of your sprinters and your rulers. So in the press release relating to the jerseys, like the real Tour de France, the distinctive jerseys will be awarded to the leaders of the general classification based on points rather than on time, best climber classification, best sprinter, and best young rider classification. Again, based on points rather than time. Unique to the virtual Tour de France, all classifications will be run as team-based classifications, Boo. therefore allowing teams to rotate riders between stages. 
All riders in the race will be eligible to score points for their team in each of their respective categories. The team leading the classification will have the freedom. The teams leading the classifications will have the freedom to nominate one rider to wear the iconic jersey for the following stage. But I know what your next question is. Chris, what teams are taking part? Let's have a bloody look. LA BTC, we've got Team Arkea, Balls Dolmans, Canyon Shram Racing, CCC Live, WNT Pro Cycling, Drops, FDJ, Lotto Sedal, Park Hotel Valkenberg, Rally Cycling, Tipco Silicon Valley Bank, Trek Segafredo Women, 2020 Pro Cycling, Team Sunweb and Valcar Travel and Service. Ish. And over in the men's, we've got AG2R, RKS Semsic, Alpacin Phoenix, Astana, B&B Hotels Vital Concept, Barry McLaren, Bora Hansgrohe, CCC, Team Kofidis, Circus of Wanty, Gobert, Decoyne Quickstep, EF Pro Cycling, Groupama FDJ, Israel Startup Nation, Team Ineos, Team Jumbo Visma, Lotto Sedal, Mitchelton Scott, NTT Pro Cycling, Rally Cycling, Team Sunweb, Total Direct Energy, and Trek Segafredo. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time Team Ineos are actually racing on Zwift, not against each other. They're actually competing. And to be fair, that is a solid lineup of teams. It doesn't really get much better than that. It really doesn't. Both men's and women's are bringing some strong teams to the table. Whether they're going to be bringing their strong riders, whether the riders are going to be feeling strong enough, whether the riders are going to be invested enough to really commit to this and make it something special, that's another question entirely. But with the likes of Froomey, Egan Bernal, Geraint Thomas, Greg Van Avermaet, and God knows who else is going to turn up to the party, we could be in for some really good racing. So over the past couple of weeks, you've heard all my thoughts on the virtual Tour de France. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? How excited are you for this? Are you any more excited than you were last week. Now we know the teams, now we know some of the riders that are going to be taking part. Are you going to be stopping what you're doing on the Saturday and the Sunday and making sure you're sitting down on the sofa ready to watch this like you would a normal Tour de France stage? Or if you forget about it, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Let me know down below. And then for us Zwifters out there who might want to take part in this, obviously we've got the virtual L'Etape de Tour de France. There's going to be three stages. The 4th and 5th of July is stage 1, Nice, which takes place in Nice, stroke Watopia. 29.5 kilometres, uh, 682 metres of uh, ascent, and that's the mountain stage from stage 2 of the virtual Tour de France. 11th and 12th of July, stage 2, southwest France, 45.8 kilometres, which is two laps of the 22.9 hilly stage. And then the final stage of the virtual L'Etape de Tour de France is 18th and 19th of July, Mont Ventoux, 22.9 kilometers, 16 sessions spread over each weekend. So there's plenty of time, plenty of opportunity to actually get on those roads and potentially that might be the first time that we can actually ride them. I'm hoping that Zwift are savvy enough not to allow anybody to ride them. I know a few people have ridden them already, but hopefully they're going to hold these stages back. Not that I want them to, but as a market employee to make sure that they're getting as many eyes on this event as they can because there's going to be so many Zwifters not necessarily interested in the racing but wanting to see what these new courses look like and if they make sure that no one's seen them and no one's ridden them up until the point that the pros do it then you're definitely going to get eyes on the prize and people looking and watching and tuning in solely to see what the courses look like but as ever let me pass it off to you are you going to be tuning in to watch the racing are you going to be tuning in just to check out what the new courses are like. I know over on some of the Zwift forums, there was a lot of disgruntled and upset people. There was just as many happy people who were excited about these new courses, but a lot of people upset with the fact that these appear at the minute to be uh, event-only places to ride, where you're not going to be able to just free ride like you can on Watopia or, or, or any other of the Zwift worlds, not including Bologna. Surely that's not going to be the case, though. Surely they're going to open these up to allow people to ride them. And I think we spoke about this last week, how uh, we were, I was asking the question whether you wanted them integrated into Watopia. Obviously, we don't get a choice in it, but how much better it would have been if they were uh, integrated into Watopia, just extended this map out. But from what we've seen from Zwift, it doesn't look like it is going to be integrated into it, which is, which is again, just... There might be a reason for it. I, don't, I really don't know what the reasons are for producing new... Um, worlds as opposed to just dropping everything into Watopia 
to be able to ride it because essentially you'd be able to go up out the Zwift. You'd be able to descend into on Mont Von 2. You could link the two up. Like we're living in a virtual world. Imagine that. One side is Alp de Zwift and the other, which they've aptly named as Mont... What is it? Mont Ven, Ventop. Which is Gallic, is it? For um, Snowy Peak or something like that? Which makes no sense because whenever you see Mont Von 2 on the Tour de France, there ain't no snow there. It's barren and it's bloody hot. So why don't they call it Barren Top? And hopefully that they've replicated that in the in the actual thing. I want it to look barren. I want it to look red hot. I want it to look like you're absolutely busting your balls in 40 degree heat trying to get to the top of Mon Von Top. I think our suggestions were much better than theirs. But anyway, that is the virtual Tour de France. As I've said, leave those comments down below. We've spoke about it for the past few weeks, but now we have some definitive information about the stages, about the riders, about the teams that are going to be taking part. Now let me get your thoughts. Are you going to be watching it solely to watch the racing? Are you going to be watching it to see the new courses? Are you not going to give a monkey's and you're waiting for the real thing to happen? Who knows? Well, you do. So let me know down below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure if you're not done already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be following the virtual Tour de France here on the channel. How are we going to be doing that? We still haven't decided, but we will be following it. We'll be talking about it and hopefully doing some, some live stuff as well. So make sure you do all that stuff I've just asked you to. And until next time, see there.